it's almost impossible to escape EMFs in our modern world. My partner Miriam and I were those weird people who switch off their Wi-Fi router at night and our phones are also constantly on airplane mode. But before we start diving into the modern world of EMF exposure, let's take a trip back in time. Have you ever heard of something called the shoe fitting fluoroscope? It was a device built during World War II by Dr. Jacob Lowe, and it was intended to scan soldiers' feet through their boots. The goal was either to speed up the process of choosing the right size shoes, or maybe to x-ray the feet of the wounded soldiers without having to remove their boots. The history is a bit hazy here. But after the war, the shoe-fitting fluoroscope became a popular attraction at high-end retail shoe stores. Customers loved the novelty of a machine that could tell them their shoe size. However, the fluoroscope emitted harmful radiation and not only affecting those using the machine, but also bystanders in the store. In the years following the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, researchers conducted a number of studies to understand the effects of radiation exposure. And these were the studies that also revealed the dangers of the shoe-fitting fluoroscope but it took almost 30 years for this device to become fully extinct. So even after scientific evidence pointed to the health risks of the shoe fitting fluoroscope, representatives of the retail shoe industry, let's call them big shoe, denied the science in newspaper articles and opinion pieces. They prioritized profits over human health, defending the fluoroscope as a means to prevent foot injuries caused by poorly fitted shoes. So this pattern of downplaying health risks to protect corporate profits has repeated many times throughout history, from seat belts and smoking to the Sackler family and their opioid epidemic. So let's take a closer look at our modern world and the potential risks of EMF exposure today. In our modern age, the levels of EMF exposure have skyrocketed. So with the advancement of technology and increased usage of electronic devices, we are constantly surrounded by man-made EMFs from cell phones and Wi-Fi to our everyday appliances. In the past, people were primarily exposed to natural EMF sources, such as the sun and the Earth's magnetic field. But today, our exposure to man-made EMFs has increased dramatically, which then raises concerns about the potential health effects of this long-term exposure to such high levels of EMFs. But when talking about EMF exposure, it's important to understand the difference between ionizing and non-ionizing radiations. So ionizing radiation, like that emitted by the shoe-fitting fluoroscope, has enough energy to remove tightly bound electrons from atoms, which can cause damage to living tissue, examples being X-rays and gamma rays. Non-ionizing radiation, on the other hand, has less energy and doesn't have enough power to ionize atoms or molecules. Examples of non-ionizing radiation include radio frequency or RF fields, such as those powered by Wi-Fi routers and cell phones. However, this doesn't mean that non-ionizing radiation is completely harmless. As we continue to increase our reliance on electronic devices and wireless technologies, the potential risks associated with non-ionizing radiation exposure become an even more important topic to consider. Despite the fact that non-ionizing radiation is generally considered to be less harmful than ionizing radiation, there's still a significant amount of research that suggests that it may pose various health risks. Some of the potential harmful effects of non-ionizing radiation exposure include things like disruption of the nervous system, damage to your DNA, disruption of your hormonal function, negative impact on immune system function, increased risk of cancer, and oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is something that occurs when there is an imbalance between the production of reactive oxygen species or free radicals and the body's ability to neutralize them with antioxidants. And this imbalance can in turn lead to cellular damage, inflammation and contribute to the development of various diseases, including neurodegenerative disorders, cardiovascular diseases and even cancer. Research has shown that exposure to non-native EMFs can exacerbate oxidative stress, further increasing the risk of these health issues. 
In today's world, it's nearly impossible to avoid exposure to EMFs entirely. However, we can take steps to limit our exposure and live with EMFs more responsibly. Some of the actions you can take to reduce your EMF exposure include turning off your Wi-Fi router at night when you're not using it, avoiding carrying your cell phone in your pocket and having airplane mode on when you're not using it, and keeping your laptop off your lap and using a desk or table instead. Then, whenever possible, consider using wired connections instead of Wi-Fi, as this can help reduce your exposure to high-frequency EMFs. Additionally, you can look at low EMF devices, such as routers designed to emit lower levels of radiation. And then for added protection, you can explore the use of EMF protection devices and materials, such as EMF blocking phone cases, special canopies and drapes for your bed, and EMF shielding paint for your walls. While some people may go through great lengths, like sleeping in a Faraday cage to block out all EMFs, finding a balance between protection and practicality is key. Remember, the best way to protect yourself from potential harm is to limit your exposure in the first place. By taking these steps, you can reduce your risk and live more responsibly in our modern EMF field world. As we continue to rely more and more on technology, it's important to reflect and consider the health implications of our choices. I really encourage you to think about the steps you can take to limit your exposure and to promote a healthier environment for yourself and those around you because i think it's always better to be safe than sorry and if you found this video helpful watch this one next